I'm wearing all my Canadian <laughs> garbs. All right, hello, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going kind of through my spring book haul. I've acquired all of these books since I think early April. I've bought from charity shops, I've bought from actual bookshops, I've ordered books from Canada, and I've also won books in giveaways, which is how I ended up with like, I think there's 21 books here. So I'm gonna go through these books and just talk about, I guess, why I bought them, why I'm excited to read them. Let's dive right in. Let's start with the books that I won. So I won two Twitter giveaways in April. I was really excited. <laughs> So the first was Captain Moxley and the Embers of the Empire by Dan Hanks. So Dan and I follow each other on Twitter because I've been kind of more involved with the writing community on Twitter over the last year since I've been kind of publishing poetry and sort of short fiction and working on my novel. So yes, that's how we kind of met and he did a giveaway for two of his books signed by him. And I won, I was so excited because one, I was really excited to read his book, but also I was having a really, really bad day. So this kind of brightened a little bit my afternoon. This seems a little bit like a female Indiana Jones, which I'm really, really kind of excited about and keen to read. It's on my list, hopefully for the summer. The second book I won was this one. It's What's Left of Me is Yours by Stephanie Scott. So I won this through the Jalak Prize, which is a UK-based prize, which is looking for the best kind of British and British residents writers who are part of like this BAM thing, so which is Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic. This book was part of their shortlist for 2021. They were doing a giveaway for each of their book on the, short, on the long list, and I won this one. I'm really excited. Um, this is based in Tokyo, and it's kind of about a woman trying to figure out um, about her mom's life and the fact that she was murdered and I think it's based on the true crime as well uh, I think it's because the author Stephanie Scott actually grew up in Japan so yeah I'm very excited it looks a little bit like it's gonna be gripping and a bit haunting and I think I'm gonna need to be in the right state of mind for it but I am looking forward to digging my teeth into it then we have a book that I actually ordered from Canada which my mom then sent me which is La Je Me Taire by Carolyn Dawson. Um, my translation for this title would be Where I Take Root. Yeah, when my mom told me about this, I was really excited because Carolyn Dawson is actually a um, Chilean woman who came to Montreal as a child. So obviously her family seemed to have escaped the dictatorship, I think, and moved to Montreal. Obviously my father was a Chilean refugee to Montreal where he met my mom and where I was born a couple years later. So I was really attracted to this book. Uh, but I guess the, um, the experience of settling in Montreal is something that I'm quite curious about. So I knew I had to have this book. And my mom kind of knows someone who knows the author. So I got it signed, which I was really excited about. Um, so this is on my list. I think hopefully in June I will be on my TBR. Now let's... Mm, okay, let's go with the books that I bought. So these are books I bought recently and I just bought them from the bookshop. Yes, so there's four of them. <laughs> um, the first one was Two Trees That Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee. I'm... So this is On Memory, Migration in Taiwan. It was a bit impulsive to buy this one on top of the other ones that I bought, but it's because I'm actually looking to make a video, but also I guess I'd pitched a workshop in one of the local writers group uh, about basically travel writing aimed at and about or from people of color. Uh, so a couple months ago I went to a workshop about travel writing which was by a Scottish, a really good Scottish travel writer, Malachi Talak, and it kind of came up that there's a lot of remnants of travel and nature writing that are extremely like white male centric, and that is a bit of a historical legacy of colonialism, and I've been really interested in hearing more from travel writers of color. You know, whether it's about their own country or, you know, as a travel, obviously, there's a lot of the privilege involved in that kind of so it's been difficult and I've been trying to get my hands on books that are about even if it's about yeah a country it's just about perception about belonging about 
visiting new places and this seemed like a really good one it was kind of recommended in terms of nature and travel writing so I'm looking really forward to this one I have two more on my list of kind of travel writers of color uh, but they are in my um, charity book pile so we'll just look at them a little bit later next was Love Bites by Rai Herman so I found out this was on my TBR in Goodreads and I forgot why <laughs> and then I realized that Herman actually has a book uh, which is coming out in 2021 and it was on the list of like the best Scottish books to look out for in 2021 and then I realized it was a second so I looked for the first one this is the first one so I uh, bought it it was a bit difficult to get I think there was like a short print run anyway so it seems to be uh, a woman basically meets another woman you know they get into a relationship but that woman is a bit mysterious and she doesn't go out at night and um, she doesn't like garlic and stuff like that anyway it's clearly implying that she's a vampire <laughs> so I thought I was kind of intrigued by it and it looked like a bit of a like fantasy meets rom-com and it has a queer love story so I thought I would try it and probably pitch it to one of my book clubs as well then we have When We Cease to Understand the World by Benjamin Labatut I think that's how you would pronounce it, I'm not sure. So this was shortlisted for the 2021 International Booker Prize, which is how I heard about it, because I think this book is actually four or five years old already, because it was originally published in Spanish. It was translated by Adrian Nathan West. So apparently Labatut is Chilean. I'm unclear of his heritage, which is why I was really confused about the name, and also because he grew up in Europe, so I don't know. But anyway, he lives in Chile, he's Chilean, I was like, I want to try it. This seems to be about science. Because it, it starts... Who does it start with? Anyway, it kind of looks at different scientists and like genius and how basically they deal with the way that they think and like basically going almost into madness. I don't know. I think this is just from the summary. But I was kind of interested by this because we're currently watching Genius on... I think it's Disney which is about Einstein, the first season anyway. Uh, so I thought I would stay in the theme <laughs> and get this. And hopefully they will understand. I'm not a very sciencey person, but I'm hoping I will understand it. And finally, we have the last, it's a big one, the last of the new books that I bought, which was The End of Men by Christina Sweeney Baird. This book, again, I follow Christina on Twitter and she follows me. Her book just came out, I think like last month, and it is a pandemic book which is something that I've been telling myself I wouldn't be reading and wouldn't be picking up but this was written pre-pandemic and it's obviously about a different pandemic and it sounded very interesting so basically it's yeah only men carry the virus only women can save them it has like the feminist element in it and I think it was inspired a bit by the power so which I am kind of halfway through it's a whole other story but I was really interested by it and I wanted to encourage her and the book so I purchased it. It is massive, which <laughs> did not expect the hardback to be this big. Um, I have read the first chapter already and it gave me massive PTSD the last year. <laughs> so I put it down a little bit. Maybe I wasn't quite ready for it, but I'm really, really excited to read it. Um, and I heard really great things about it. All right, now let's dive into my pile of books that I got from the charity shop. And most of them I got from Oxfam. Sorry, people are shouting outside. <laughs> so yeah, most of them I got from Oxfam, but I don't know if I'll buy from them again, just because I felt, I thought it was, I felt really weird about it because I ordered like 10 books from them or something. And you know, you pay for postage, which I think you pay once. And then I got it in like eight different packages which one of them recently arrived, so it's been like five or six weeks that I've been waiting for it. But they clearly all came from different Oxfam shops across the UK. And then I was like, okay, some of the books I paid like two pounds for, which is probably why it costed them to send it to me. And I was like, I don't think it's, yeah, I don't know how they're making money on here. But I felt really weird and uh, to be fair, I ordered these before the bookshops had reopened, so I probably won't be ordering from online bookshops or like, not the cherry ones anyway so yeah so that's how i feel about oxfam <laughs> but the first one i actually ordered from a books which i know is owned by amazon it's the first time 
and probably last time I'm gonna use it. This is a Chilean book that I've been looking for for months and I cannot find it and I'm sure it's because we're in you know in, in the UK and in Europe whatever and it's really really hard to find and I did pay like 15 pounds for it <laughs> so I'm hoping no one really lost money on here but it was New Islands by Maria Luisa Bombal she is a kind of turn of the century and you know the last one it's an early 1900 Chilean writer and so I came up about her in my kind of Chilean writer research and I was looking for more contemporary writers but she came up as like a female writer of note that I'd never heard about and that I'd never read so I was really keen to get my hands on this book uh, it's tiny and it costs like quite a lot and it has a sticker that won't come off but I'm really looking forward to diving into it I think it's just four short stories and it has a preface by uh, Jorge Luis Borges. I'm very excited. And I'll probably hopefully have like a Chilean writer's video coming up at some point, maybe over the summer. Okay, the second one was, this one is not in the best shape. It actually has some water damage, but don't care. Uh, How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents by uh, Julia Alvarez or Julia Alvarez, depending on how she pronounces it. Um, this was a bit of an impulsive buy. I saw it. I was really intrigued by it. I think it's about basically a family that moves to the US, I think. Yeah, so they uproot their family from the Dominican Republic and arrive in New York City in the 1960s. So I was just really intrigued by it and I thought, why not? <laughs> I felt like I was in a bookshop and I was like, yeah, I'll pick this one up. So this is how I bought that. Another one is A Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hirumi Kawakami. Again, I know nothing about this. I just saw it, kind of the cover. I was really intrigued by it. Picked it up, you know. Um, one night when she's drinking alone in the local bar, Tsukiko finds herself sitting next to her former high school teacher. Over the coming months, they share food and drink sake, and as the season passes, to Tsukiko and her teacher come to develop a hesitant intimacy that tilts awkwardly and poignantly towards love. It just looked like a nice short wee book and I do enjoy the quirkiness of some kind of Japanese writers, so yeah. Next we have one that I've mentioned before in my year of translation video, which is Big Breasts and White Hips by Mo Yang, which is a Chinese writer who's also, as I failed to mention in the last video, the Nobel, one of the Nobel Prize winners for literature in China. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It's quite massive. So we shall see if I manage it. Uh, big books have been kind of very intimidating to me over the last year <laughs> since the pandemic started. So we shall see. But um, when we get to the month of China, which I now don't remember, I think it was October. Mm. Anyway. Uh, I will, this will be my, the book to read. Then we have another impulsive buy, I mean all of these were impulsive, let's, let's be completely honest here. <laughs> With the Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. How am I supposed to explain myself here? Hmm. Okay, I watched the TV show, which was cringe, but I enjoyed it, you know? Whatever, I don't care. Judge me if you want. <laughs> and this was the first book, it was on sale for like two quid, whatever, on the charity shop. So I decided to pick it up and have it in my library. It's, it's quite a large book, but it's I find the fancy genre easier to read. Like, it's, even if it's a large book, because usually it kind of describes the world. Yeah, so I'll try to be diving into it at some point. Maybe I can do a video, like comparing. Cause I'm hoping to do quite a lot of that in the future, like comparing TV shows and adaptations with the books. So we shall see. Then we have yes, I'm very excited. Maya Angelou All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes. So this is part of her uh, autobiography, which I think is in kind of multiple, I want to say six books, but I may be wrong. I'm sorry. So this is the one where she actually, when she lived in Africa uh, for a couple of years. And this is kind of part of my travel writers of color. So she talks obviously about moving there, like Mother Africa, uh, as obviously uh, an African-American and how you can never really go home and it's kind of like this whole perception which was really intriguing to me and I have never read any Maya Angelou which is a shameful but and this may be a weird one to start with but I was really intrigued by it and when I saw it I had to purchase it 
Then we have another travel writer of color. So it's Shadow City, A Woman Walks Kabul by Taran K. Khan. I think Khan is actually Indian. Yes, Indian journalist Tara Khan arrives in Kabul in 2006. She imag imagines it as a return to the land her forebears hailed from centuries ago. Um, and yeah, she spends quite a lot of time there and it seemed like such a great story but also kind of diving into this drama writing that I was talking about. And then I saw it was actually recommended in one of my favorite bookshops, uh, local in Edinburgh. And I knew I'd made the right choice when I purchased this um, from the charity shop. Then we have a book that I'm currently reading this May, which is Raven Black by Anne Cleves. Uh, you may know about it, I don't know. Uh, Shetland, you have the little logo here. Shetland is the TV show uh, based well, in Shetland. It started quite a few years ago because I feel like I watched it in 2000, 2016. They're still filming that actually, they've just started refilming for the next season. So, this is the season, is, the series is based on a series of books um, about, I think it's like Detective Inspector Perez who lives in Lerick, which is in. Shetland on the Shetland Islands and I find it really hard to find the first book like even in normal bookshops so I got it on the charity shop um, and I'm kind of a quarter through it's very good it's like a page turner so I'm really excited although when I first opened it and then it said oh it's really hard to write a book about Shetland when you're living and from England and I was just like really disappointed suddenly that Anne Cleves is actually English, she lives in England and she has visited Shetland, which is better than I have done, I've never been there hopefully one day I will um, but I find it sometimes disappointing how writers seem, especially a lot of English writers seem to base their books in Scotland for some sort of like exoticness that I find bizarre and so I'm kind of trying to stay away from that usually but I also like Shetland, that this TV show and the books have such a big impact on Scottish culture so I really wanted to give it a try so I'm reading through it and that's actually really good so you know I'll reserve judgment until I finish it. <laughs> I have another Scottish book next which is Whiskey Galore by Compton Mackenzie. Um, <laughs> so I also, I also watched a movie of this, which this is based on like a true story where a ship wrecked with whiskey and they basically stole it. <laughs> I don't know if there was prohibition, it was just because it was because it was wartime so they had less access to, to alcohol and stuff like that. But it's just this really funny story and uh, the, the movie was kind of funny as well. And when I saw the book, I knew I needed to get it and try to to read the <laughs> to read the book by Mackenzie. Next we have a classic of Icelandic literature, which is Independent People by Haldor Laxnex. I am a writer for an Icelandic company, so I've been kind of very involved with like I guess Icelandic culture and I've been wanting to learn more about it obviously because I write quite a lot about it. And books are like this big thing in Iceland and they have, I think they used to have like the biggest production of books per capita, something like that. And Laxness is their Nobel Prize winner of literature. This is this kind of seminal work. So uh, when I saw it, I knew I had to buy it because I had tried to buy it a couple of years ago from the store and just could not find it. Um, it's quite large. <laughs> I guess it's a bit like a saga, but I look forward to kind of dipping into it slowly but surely. Next we have another translated work that I've talked about before which is Women of Sand and Myrrh by Hanana Shaikh. This was kind of bought when I was doing my research into like work that had been translated from the Arabic and while I didn't read this from my April in Arabia, I read Girls of Riyadh um, because Al Shaikh I think is from Lebanon but uh, I'd heard such good things about it, I had to get it and I look forward to reading it hopefully later this year. Um, yeah, I look forward to it. Then we have a really interesting <laughs> looking book. So when I was scrolling through literally all of the books on the Oxfam website, uh, I kind of stopped really briefly on this one because it's very striking and it's called The Bookseller's Tale by Anne Swinf Swinfin, I think. 
and I was like, oh, how, you know, this is so old, it looks so old. <laughs> I think this is actually like from 2010 or something like that. 2016. <laughs> um, but I love kind of the uh, clearly inspired by Chaucer, you know, um, Canterbury Tales. Uh, he has like all the tales of the different people, and so this is the book sailor's tale. And it's basically a, there's been a murder. I think it's in Oxford, yeah, Oxford Spring, 1353. A young bookseller discovers the body of a student floating in the river. Um, yeah, and I, I bought it. I, that's it. I mean, the whole thing just convinced me really quickly. And I'll try to. It feels like almost like a, like a manual from school. The way that it's printed, uh, but yeah, I look forward to kind of diving into it. It looks like a, I don't know if fun is the right word, but it looked like an interesting, I guess like crime fiction, but historical, so yeah. Then the last two by the same writer, which is Isabel Broom. I have two here, my map of you and a one winter morning. Um, so I read a few of Broom's books um, a couple years ago. I got a couple arcs and I kind of enjoy her writing. It's very much like cozy literature. She usually bases all of them in like a different city across Europe. So, you know, you're kind of traveling with the characters a little bit and there's a love story and kind of a self-discovery moment and stuff like that. Um, I've purchased one other one previously, also secondhand, uh, that I really like, which I think is A Year and One Day, which is based in Prague. And these are the two that I hadn't read by her, I think. So, and they were kind of just cheap on the, um, on the charity shop. And I think this one's based in Greece. This one, I have no idea. This is just a, like a winter. Oh, New Zealand. Hmm, okay. Branching out. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to you know nice cozy read. This one will probably be a really good one for a summer read. <laughs> all right, that was all of the books that I've purchased over the last kind of two months so over the springtime. I hope you've enjoyed kind of going through them with me and learning about how I impulsively bought all of them. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you've read any of them or which one do you think I should start with. You know, I know a couple of them I've started dipping in already, but which one do you think I should have next on my TBR? Please leave a comment and, you know, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And hey, see you back. Bye!